one of the most delightful surprises, uh, I guess, is that felling trees is kind of a uh, dangerous undertaking in Valheim because they can kill you. People have built starships, like uh, uh, Starship Enterprise. They build, uh, built the Millennium Falcon as well. I have seen people make build ships from uh, Star Wars. I have seen upside down houses and wizard's towers and Hagrid's cottage from Harry Potter. However, it seems that the internet has found new ways to die by uh, trees. There seems to be instances of, uh, of trees actually after they have fallen, kind of coming back for uh, a second round and uh, killing players that way, which is uh, really entertaining, of course. The number that I was most blown away by was the Steam reviews, not the sales numbers. We're still sitting at 96% uh, overwhelmingly positive, which is nice. <laughs> this, this is good. Hit tree with axe. Tree hit me back. 10 out of 10. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> That's kind of an interesting story how uh, I first came in touch with Valheim, which was at the time called Fade. If you look up Fade, let's see what it, it actually it means in Swedish. In English you could say it stands for Vendetta, I guess. Uh, as in a sort of blood feud. It's a good synonym for, for that word. That was in early 2018, when I um, uh, saw Richard had been uh, posting on, on Facebook that he was prototyping uh, a new game called Fade. It was super rough, it was super simple, but it had all the um, sort of key ingredients for making an, an interesting game. In my role as a scout, I kind of just reached out to him on, on, on Messenger and asked him if he wanted any help um, and like said that Coffee Stain is now a publisher and we, we can probably help you out. He was like, yeah, sure, um, let's talk. I worked with Richard back then, so I kind of always knew about it and I thought it had a lot of potential. Uh, and I felt that it was the right time for me to quit my current job. The fact that he needed someone to help out with Valheim came at the perfect time for me. Since then we've changed the, the story a bit. So you're actually working for Odin now. <laughs> That's kind of where it clicked for me, this Viking-themed uh, epic story about you being on an adventure together with friends, slaying these bosses one by one uh, until you reach Valhalla. That was the sort of the, the simple outline for the game that just made me want to go, yes, I, I really want to do this, especially with someone as skilled as him. So, yeah. The last year of, of university, me and two friends and we're going to start our own little company where we were going to make mobile games. But that uh, sort of ended when I uh, got the job at Iron Gate. And here I am now. <laughs> so I went from game design to game writing to animation to community management. <laughs> we were pretty confident from, from the beginning that uh, Valheim would be received positively and uh, that we probably will have enough sales to continue development through early access but that it would go on to become as popular as it has was quite unexpected. On the launch night it was kind of a normal day. I kind of 
distinctly remember that we uh, I, I called to a, a meeting uh, like two hours before launch to sort of have everyone gathered and make sure that we press all the buttons at once. There's a lot of buttons to push that uh, separate people are also pushing. There's the, obviously the making the game available on Steam and then there's all the socials. <laughs> I was so worried that something would go wrong at some other place when I was pressing my, bu my button that if I announced the news of the release of the game and the game wouldn't be released, it would be utter chaos, but luckily that didn't happen. <laughs> so everybody pushed the buttons at the same time. Everybody was like, yeah, that's great. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a wrap, <laughs> basically. And then uh, two hours later, the uh, impressive sales number started coming in. And the publishing team we had all uh, made sort of projections on on uh, first week uh, of uh, units sold when when my prediction was surpassed in the first two hours then I kind of knew that we were onto something big but I didn't quite realize how how big it was because it kind of accelerated from there even further yeah it was quite uh, <laughs> quite surprising and quite uh, overwhelming to sort of just grasp what had uh, happened. I have like a blackout from the release week, so I barely remember anything that happened. I uh, thought of that the week after, and I was trying to think how I had spent my work days, because it must have been answering emails, but I couldn't, I couldn't bring back any memories of it. <laughs> so everything is just a blur. When did we grasp that this was real? I, I'm not sure we have grasped, grasped it quite yet, uh, to be honest. When did you realize that this was going like... Uh... A few hours after release. <laughs> and people were mentioning us everywhere and uh, the Discord, it was just people rolling in. Um, so yeah, it didn't take long until I realized that this is, <laughs> this is big. I don't think anyone on the team has compre comprehended what, what's happened yet. Uh, I mean, we're, we're trying to focus on improving the, the game for everyone who purchased it. So uh, it, it, we're, we're very busy and I guess that's for the best. We haven't met at all since, uh, since the release of the game. So we haven't really celebrated. And I think had we had that celebration, it would be more set in our minds that this is happening, uh, but now our days look almost the same, but just a lot more. <laughs> We've had a pretty clear vision of Valheim since day one, actually. It hasn't changed that much, really. So we've just uh, stuck to what we think would work, and uh, obviously we did something right, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> we get a lot of stories from people uh, that are very thankful because they have found something to play with friends and family members that may live a bit far away and that they can't meet due to the pandemic. And some people have said that it has helped them with feeling restless. Sometimes, some people have even said that it has helped them with depression and having uh, been, par been part of something that have helped people in that way, is, uh, it feels fantastic. Um, I don't think there's really a feeling that can describe that. Regarding the question about wanting to live in Valheim, that was also something that was uh, kind of surprising at the launch. Uh, the, the dedicated server application became very popular almost immediately, which was something we hadn't foreseen at all. Uh, people are building villages, basically, and I think that's that's it really. I mean, you have your world, you build a village with your friends. It becomes a, a living place in, in its own almost that, that way. I think. We make a thing about like going to bed at night. You, you have to take off all your armor. You can't sleep with your armor on because no one does that. And it's a rule, it's a house rule we've made up in the game. So every night you, you have to go to, to the house and take off your stuff and lay down? Yeah, you have to, uh, exactly, you have to take off your armor, you have to uh, 
sort of, uh, you know, put, put more wood on the fire, um, potentially eat something uh, or cook, uh, cook for the next day and, you know, just kind of hang out and chill for a bit and, uh, uh, yeah, and talk about the adventures you've, uh, you've just survived or not survived. I mean, we wanted to have survival elements in the game, but we wanted it to, we wanted to make it more like an adventure. That's basically the kind of game we wanted to play, a survival game with your friends, where you work together. Technically, yes, I would say it's fair to compare it to Minecraft, especially from like uh, certain uh, game design perspectives. Maybe not so much about mining, even though there is mining, but there, there's definitely crafting and then there's this kind of day-night cycle. Valheim will always be more of an adventure game. The level of success, naturally, is yet to be determined, but if, if we are to uh, extrapolate from, from this point, I, I think we're well positioned to be in the sort of Minecraft, Minecraft realm uh, of things. If we can have a fraction of the success that Minecraft has had, uh, we would obviously be very, very happy. Uh, I mean, Valheim has sold well, but Minecraft has sold well for many years. The future of uh, Valheim, I think, lies very much in the um, uh, updates during uh, uh, early access. It feels like we have a lot of the Valheim story uh, left to tell. Obviously we want to bring something new to the game with every new biome we add. We have five biomes right now and we would want nine. So just that, that portion of, uh, of the game still not there and there's a huge opportunity there to just put tons of interesting stuff there. We do get a lot of suggestions in uh, both the emails and uh, on Steam and on uh, Discord. <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of ideas on how, to, uh, how they would like to enhance the game and we do listen to those suggestions. Uh, we do get some suggestions that would mean changing the whole game and making it into something else. So those are usually not the ones we focus on because we still want Valheim to be Valheim. But uh, within those that realm uh, of what we want Valheim to be. We do get a lot of suggestions that are uh, really great and really fun. We had time to move in all the boxes that's behind that curtain. You can't see them, but uh, yeah, we haven't um, been able to properly move in yet, so th that's a shame. It will happen sometime in the future. Uh, Did you move in here? Yeah. yeah. We probably will, or perhaps we will have to get an even bigger office, because we have to hire some people. So actually we'll have to see about it, I guess. So this is the sword that's used for animations in Valheim. The roles at Iron Gate are, are basically that uh, Richard is the programmer and the uh, creator of Valheim, uh, the lead designer, and I am the other lead designer on Valheim. And then we have a, uh, an artist that does all the visual stuff. And then we also have uh, another designer who we took in when I didn't uh, have the time to do my design work any longer. We also have our community manager, Lisa. She's, uh, she's a very busy girl. If I could clone myself, uh, I would uh, make at least five. <laughs> so that I could put one of me on, uh, like one who focuses only on Discord and one who's only on Twitter and one who's only on emails. So that everyone can get my full attention. <laughs> I need five. <laughs> But I need five of me because I have a certain way <laughs> to do things. <laughs> We're going to grow slow, basically uh, filling up the uh, competence holes that we have, have in the company. We, we get a lot more job applications now than we did, for, uh, than we did a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are all of a sudden a very, very rich man. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> uh, 
I I haven't really reflected that much on that, I guess. Uh, for me, it's kind of like the journey is just beginning with Valheim, hopefully. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's nice, obviously, but yeah, I don't really know how to answer that question, I'm afraid. Perhaps it is too big to wrap your head around, yeah. It, that may be true, actually. Perhaps I haven't even realized it yet. I don't know. <laughs>